If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. In this situation, we have two blocks that are colliding. And in any collision, we know that momentum is conserved. So what we're going to do first is write out the principle of the conservation of linear momentum. Now, basically, that says that the total initial momentum is going to equal the total final momentum of the system. Now, momentum, we know, is equal to mass times velocity. So we can expand the total initial momentum using the expression mv. Now, there are two blocks, so that means we would have to write m1 times the initial velocity of block 1 plus m2 times the initial velocity of block 2. And then we're going to set that equal to the same expression, only we're going to change the initial values to final values. Now, the question notes that block 2 will be coming to rest after the collision. So that means that the final velocity of block 2 is going to equal 0. And so right here we can see the final velocity of block 2. If that term is 0, then this entire term will actually be eliminated from the equation. And what we're trying to find is the final velocity of block 1, which is vf1. So what we'll do is we'll divide both sides of this equation by m1. And that way we can isolate our target of vf1. At this point of the problem, we can simply plug in the known values. m1 was stated as being 1.6 kilograms. m2 is stated to be 2.10 kilograms. The initial velocity of both blocks is given in the problem. It's also shown in the picture. Please be mindful that the initial velocity of block 2 is negative 2.5 meters per second because that block is moving to the left. So just make sure you include that negative sign for the initial velocity of block 2. So we'll plug in all the known values. And when we simplify that, we should get positive 0.719, and the unit will be meters per second since we're calculating velocity. And the fact that we had a positive value for that final velocity indicates that block 1 will be moving to the right after the collision. And so there's the proper direction and the proper magnitude of the final velocity of block 1. Those are the answers to part A. Now to solve part B, which is asking us for the compression of the spring, we can actually use the conservation of energy rather than the conservation of momentum. So let's take a look at that principle. So according to the conservation of energy principle, the total initial energy will equal the total final energy. And we'll go ahead and expand these energy terms to include the specific types that are found in this problem. Now we'll make sure that we break down each side of this expression because it might look a little overwhelming. This term right here represents the initial kinetic energy of block 1. This is the initial kinetic energy of block 2. And then this is the initial potential energy that's stored in the spring. Let's note that initially the spring is completely relaxed. It's neither compressed nor is it stretched out. So actually the potential energy stored in the spring will be 0. On the other side we have the final kinetic energies of block 1 and 2 and then also the final spring potential energy. Now we're trying to solve for the compression of the spring, which is x, and so that might be a bit complicated. What we need to do is subtract this term and this term over to the left-hand side of the equation first. Now we'll notice that 1 half appears in each of the terms of this equation, so we can essentially divide each term by a half and that will eliminate the 1 half from each term. We could then divide both sides of the equation by k, so that way we can isolate the x squared term on the right hand side. And then finally to isolate x we can take the square root of both sides of this equation. Now all we have to do is plug in the known values very carefully. Remember we know m1 and m2. We also know the initial velocity of block 1 and the initial velocity of block 2. The final velocity of block 1 was calculated in part a of this question. Let's not forget that that value was positive 0.719 and then the final velocity of block 2 was actually 0 since that block was at rest. So that's going to actually eliminate this entire term. So we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. Note that each of the velocities is being squared in the numerator of this expression. And once we simplify it, we should get approximately 2 point, excuse me, 0.251 meters as the value for x. And so this would be the correct answer to part b of the question.
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, th click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. And don't forget, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.